Well, I told you I would fail to do weekly updates, so I kept my promise. So this is an update on my training for my first uh, 50k ultra marathon, and uh, yeah, I skipped a couple weeks. Uh, I've just been slammed busy. I've got a, a big project going for the main YouTube channel that is finally starting to look like something, uh, and uh, yeah, just. I never got around to this, and I'm sure like one of you, maybe two of you, have been clamoring for a, an update. So I just finished week six of the training. I think my last update was at the end of week three, maybe. So, so instead of just telling you about my week this week, I thought uh, this would be a good time to talk about the plan that I'm following to train for the 50K. I'm training by myself. I'm not part of a training group. Uh, don't have a coach or anything like that. I'm using a training plan I got online for free. This is not an endorsement or anything, but the training plan I'm using is from Hal Higdon, and I'll put a link in the description for that. And uh, they, they have, he has some plans that uh, you can just download for free, and then he has some pay options for additional follow-up information or I think weekly emails or something like that. Truthfully, I'm not really into that kind of thing, and I'm not really that good at training for stuff anyway. Uh, I just basically wanted uh, a schedule of uh, run distances and stuff to follow so I'd have some idea what I was doing and not just running farther and farther uh, all the way to the, to the 50K. So uh, I followed a Hal Higdon plan when I ran my marathon about 10 years ago. I ended up running that marathon very, very slow. It was just under five hours. I mean, it barely squeaked under five hours. And uh, I had some injuries and stuff that may have contributed. Uh, I have to run a marathon as part of this training, so I'm hoping to maybe uh, do a little bit better this time. So I'm not gonna go into every detail about the plan, but in case you know, you're know you watching this and thinking, you know, maybe I might wanna try something like this, but you know, the training's gotta be awful. It's really not that bad. Uh, I'll, I'll show you kind of how it's starting to shape up, but essentially you're running five days a week uh, with Monday and Friday off. Um, and the midweek runs, I think the longest is 10 miles for the whole time. So, you know, that's not too bad. Uh, and I, I've talked about the weather before, but I'm, you know, I live in South Florida and running in the afternoon can be problematic in the summer because of thunderstorms. But we're kind of moving past that time now, so uh, I should be able to go run right after work. By the time I get to those those longer midweek runs, the temperatures should be bearable at four o'clock in the afternoon when I get off, so I should be able to run and not have to worry about storms and stuff. So 10 miles isn't a big deal. Basically, the way the plan works is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have kind of a shorter distance run with a slightly longer distance in the middle and then some quite a bit longer runs on the weekend uh, and generally the pace doesn't matter so much as I understand it um, except for on days that are designated as paces so right now at six weeks in about one run a week is a pace and you're supposed to run that at about the pace that you intend to run the 50k in and this is one problem I've been having as I start my training I am not a fast runner my current PR for a 5k is at about a seven minute and 42 second pace, something like that. By comparison, the guy who just set the new world record in the marathon was running like a 4.30 for a marathon, like the whole time. I couldn't run a 4.30 for one mile, much less for 26 of them. So I'm not a terribly fast runner, but the pace that I think I'm going to run the 50K at is a little bit slower than my kind of usual running pace. So I've been kind of confused about that, about, you know, if I'm running a pace, you know, the idea being to, I guess, build up the ability to run faster or longer, um, should I be running slower than I feel like running? Because that's the pace I'm gonna run the race at, or should I run faster in the hopes that maybe my, my time for the 50K will be faster? And I don't know the answer to this question. All I can tell you is, I'm just running as fast as I feel like I can for the distance that uh, I'm running that day. And I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but I'm, I'm running a bit faster than what I expect to run the 50K in. One of the more challenging parts of this training so far has just been making myself slow down uh, 
because I, I knew, do need to run more slowly in order to run the distance, but uh, every time I look at my watch, I feel like I'm running way too slowly and, and you know, I'm a terrible human being. So basically, I, I downloaded the plan from uh, Hal Higdon and I just bought a calendar. I could put all this in my iPhone or you know a spreadsheet or something, I guess. This works great for me because uh, at any given time I can look at it and know, oh, this Saturday I have a 18-mile run, so don't make any other plans for that day or whatever. Um, so that's been helpful to be able to look ahead and know, uh, you know, I have a, a mountain bike festival I'm going to, a, a couple of trips coming up. I don't know what to expect for those weeks and whether I need to move some things around. Hal Higdon on his site puts it really well that, you know, if you need to make adjustments to the plan, that's fine, but if you make too many adjustments, I think the way you put it is if you're not following the plan, you're not following the plan. So I'm gonna try not to mess around with things too much, but it is nice to be able to look at it this way rather than for me trying to look at it electronically is a little bit less user friendly. So that's how I'm organizing my uh, training. And by the way, I'm gonna get into gear at some point. I use a Garmin. Uh, I forget which model it is, it's the 4Runner 35 or something like that. It's one of their less expensive models. And I guess Garmin has a forum or something that you can like uh, communicate with other people training and you know share data and there's spreadsheets and stuff. That I don't do any of that. I don't keep a lot of my data. Uh, I know a few statistics of prior runs and stuff, but um, I'm not real big on the, you know, making this into a homework project. To give you an example of how the training has progressed so far, when I started the run, I was doing a three mile run on Tuesday, a five mile run on Wednesday, a three mile run on Thursday, and then different distances on Saturday and Sunday. And then after a couple weeks, that went to 3.63, and then 3.73 for a couple weeks, and now we're going to 4.84 for a couple of weeks. And then four nine four five ten five goes up uh, somewhat logically from there. Uh, seems to be going well for me so far. Um, I ran 17 miles this weekend and feel great and really enjoyed the runs and stuff. I mean, uh, you know, it's still early in the process, but I'm feeling really good, so I'm happy. The other kind of uh, maybe it shouldn't have been unexpected, but I kind of wasn't expecting it because I, it's not like I just started working out. I mean, I've been working out three to five days a week anyway, depending on what you consider working out. Uh, and I've made some minor dietary changes, but nothing really related to the running necessarily. Uh, and I've lost, depending on how you count this stuff, between seven and 10 pounds, um, which I didn't know that I had that much to lose anyway. I suspect that Maybe that'll last through the training and the run, and then I'll probably gain 20 <laughs> after I'm done. Um, but I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm actually kind of concerned about that because uh, my what I consider to be my perfect fighting weight is about 148 pounds. It's where I feel like I'm at an optimal weight without being ridiculous about it. Um, and I usually tend to hover around 155, so, you know, about seven pounds over my self-described optimal weight. Um, and I think this morning I was 148, but I was, I've was i been as low as 144 uh, on this plan, which is honestly lower than I would like to be. Um, and, and the reason why that concerns me is uh, I don't wanna have it shoot back up when I stop running, and I don't know that I wanna run this much for the rest of my life. But, uh, so hey, if you're looking to lose a few pounds, start running a lot. Last thing, I've calculated that so far in the training plan, I've run about 160 miles, which is kind of astonishing. You don't really, or I don't really think about, you know, how quickly this stuff adds up. It's like a legitimately large number of miles to have run in what seems like a, a pretty short period of time. So, Anyway, that's it for today. I'll be back in a week or two or three whenever I get around to it. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. If you're not a subscriber to my main channel, go over and check that out because sewing is awesome. And yeah, that's it. See ya.